one of the real beautiful things that comes out of African American or new African culture is this value for human life, humanistic values, the value for black life and the value for the lives of all people. And so it's, it's been basic to black teachings and black families is people before money, people before money. This is fundamental. This is the core African and African-American cultural principle. We live by it. But now those who are expert on hip hop culture observe, I'm not an expert, but I, I observe it as well, that when it comes to this choice, due to the intrusion of media, due to all of the corporate values that are hitting black communities and other communities as well, but at a time in which families and extended family communities and black communities are severely weakened, then our youth are more vulnerable to these outside forces. And um, one of the biggest ones is materialism. And so to me, of the hip hop generation, when it comes to a choice between material things, money in particular, and human life, too many place the material first. And interestingly enough, in situations in which they hardly ever see any anyway. And so this is something that again, by drawing from our roots, the, the deepest aspects of our roots, um, we can begin to um, renew this culture and strengthen it and see that we don't become ugly because anyone who is just basically about glitter and has no interest or very little interest in human life, they've lost their humanity. And I'm not saying that just because someone has this value, they've lost their humanity, but it is a, uh, a serious erosion in our culture that enslaved Africans didn't experience for the most part. So therefore in the free of mind system of uh, methods and systems for strengthening African and African identity transformations, we, we have to go back to roots. We have to draw from the roots, from the foundation of our culture. Very often when we do this, we start with ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Kemet, as I pointed out before, KMT, we don't know how the language was spoken. So we add the vowel K-E-M-E-T. It's portrayed in the writings of ancient Kemet uh, as charcoal black, usually as a black person, meaning the black people, which is the meaning of Kemet. Usually when we go to these roots, we usually start with Kemet. But anyone that knows me knows that I like to go back to the very beginning. And so I start with the Twa, T-W-A, or some call them Batwa or the Kung people or San people of the Kalahari Desert, which mitochondrial DNA says that's the DNA of the mother, goes back 144,000 years. The Biakotwa of the Congo and uh, the Kung of the Kalahari Desert are, according to mitochondrial DNA, the world's first people. And the click language of the um, Kung people or San people is the first language human beings spoke. And once, according to linguists, a person loses that ability to speak in a click language, they can't recover it because it's like root, it's first. So when we're looking at the foundation of new African and African-American culture, it's very, very important to go back to roots. And in the case of the Twa, they are the first human beings. They are the mothers of humanity and fathers of humanity. 
They are the mothers and fathers of civilization. As John Henry Clark used to define it, breaking it down real simple, being civilized is being civil. They are the most civil people on the planet Earth, the kindest, the ones that never practice slavery, the ones in which women are not abused, children or elders are not abused, and in which freedom is as natural as breathing. Humanity lived in this state for 100,000 years. You read my book, The Integration Trap, Generation Gap, Caused by a Choice Between Two Cultures. I go into this in depth. They not only give birth to humanity, to the idea of one God, they give birth to deep thought. That is to philosophy. Uh, my master, teacher, Jacob Carruthers, Dr. Jacob Carruthers, called this deep thought, as I pointed out before, the Dogon call it deep knowledge because their system is based on astrophysics. And so that's what they draw from. And so uh, with the Chua, who are the world's first people, they call themselves the pure people. And by that, they mean a people who basically operate on a plane of goodness. And that purity is tied very much to their wisdom. Because people who operate on this pure level are in a continual contact with that force that we call God, that the Chua call the Ilani, I-L-L-A-N-I, vital force, a life force that is in everything that God created. So these Twa have mind powers of a high order. Dr. Theophil Obinga, who is uh, the best scholar on ancient Kemen in the world today, said that in the Congo, the Twa introduced his people to medicine. And medicine, not just of the kind that you see in Western medicine, but spirit medicine as well as physical medicine. And they introduced people to a whole lot else. They were the founders of ancient Kemet, the Anu people, who were agrarian Chua. But the key point is they laid the foundation for African deep thought. And that deep thought is founded in a notion that is both ethical, uh, that, that deals with what it means to be human because the system of ethics that, that a people base th their lives on is uh, very much uh, an expression of their humanity. At the same time, it is a description of the deepest principles that govern the universe, generally referred to as metaphysics. They're the masters of that. And they give birth to a conception of truth and justice called Masuri or Ma'u, M-A-A-U or M-A-A-S-O-U-R-I, Masuri. And what does that mean? It means straight, upright truth and justice. And by the way, uh, in ancient Kemet, the oldest, one of the oldest descriptions of Ma'at uh, was an upright slab, straight. So they are the authors of what in ancient Kemet becomes the foundation of their deep thought, which is Ma'at. Last week, I referred to Ma'at on its ethical plane. That is Ma'at representing truth and justice and kindness and all of those things. Today, I particularly want to focus on the deeper dimension of that, which is the, the breadth and depth of Ma'at. Ma'at represents unity or unicity, oneness, oneness. Ma'at is all-encompassing as a concept. It is described as the rudder of heaven and the beam of earth. Rudder is that rear part of a ship 
that guides it and gives it direction. Beam of Earth, it's a center point. It's the balancing point. And so what's being said here is ma'at, or harmony, truth, justice, right order, is the basis for the direction of the cosmos. In creation, in Kemet, when creation first occurs in Kemet, the first state is not God. The first state is the noon, N-U-N, and it's a watery-like mass full of electromagnetic magnetic energy. Most scientists regard this as the comedic version of quantum physics, that this energy that's in everything. And out of this watery mass comes God, who's called Pata. God's called many names in Kemet, but in this form is Pata. But what does Pata do? Pata swallows Ma'at. Meaning, this is symbolic, that God internalizes truth, justice, and right order. So last time, you know, we were talking about singularity and the Dogon and how um, Dogon deep thought is rooted in the happening before happening, which is before time, before relativity, where everything could be reduced to a wrinkle in what later becomes space. So that is the Dogon conception and it's deep. And the Kemetic conception is, is tied to this idea that out of a watery mass, which is the energy, comes God. But the key thing is God is resting on truth. God is resting on balance. And we know with black folks, God is everything. So. What's the constituents of God is most important to us. And we all know God is truth. Also unconditional love. And by the way, ma'at is love at its highest order. So if we look at ma'at as a concept, it's the concept of everything. So it is the rudder of heaven, the beam of earth. It is what guides God. And by the way, Ma'at is pictured as a woman, an Egyptian or comedic woman with an ostrich feather in her hair, indicating that the feminine principle embodies this idea of Ma'at. Your mother embodies this principle of Ma'at. It shows the high respect that African people have for women and for the feminine principle. So it governs the universe or the cosmos. It is central to God, but it also governs everything else. It is the basis for nature. It guides nature. It is the basis for judicial systems. And so they should be guided by justice or by truth. It's the basis for personal ethics or humanism, which we discussed last week, which is uh, truth and justice, which is not something you just study, but you speak it and you do it. And so it's an all encompassing concept, which the human being in the comedic notion of what it is to be human should embody. So it embraces this idea of ontology, which is the idea of what it is to be human. It is the essence of what it is to be human. It is, it is at the uh, very core of what it is to um, explain or understand what, what is or what are the fundamental principles of the cosmos or the universe. And so it's an all encompassing concept. And so what it means is that the African, the African mentality is one that does not separate itself from God, does not separate itself from nature, does not separate itself from the cosmos. It understands, and, and I've, you know, in uh, Dogon thought, I've, I've learned this concept that in anything is everything. The smallest part of the cosmos 
is a reflection of the largest part. We are the miniature part of this larger cosmos. Everything that's in the cosmos, the elements that make it up uh, are within us. DNA, the, the very composition of a human being, uh, or animals or animate or inanimate objects. All of them have this life force and they have this essence of what is cosmic, cosmic material, cosmic energy. And so this creates a mindset, a deep mindset that's all encompassing, all embracing. And so Africans, as we come into this hellhole called America or the Western Hemisphere, the Caribbean or South America, now residing in Europe or wherever we are, we carry this deep down inside of us. This is real key, this, this connection with everything. And, and we also carry, because at a time in which we're facing global warming, we have this notion that to be human is not only to live in balance with nature, it is to serve as the Bambara say, as a guardian of nature. Or as George Washington Carver said, as a healer of, na of nature, but not as a controller of nature. And so this, Conception is profound and deep and at the same time simple. And it, it's heart and soul, it's based on humanism, kindness, goodness, justice, and on complexity. It's simple, but it's also all encompassing. So it's also complex. And that's the nature of black folks. So it is this idea, this notion, deep thought, and there's much more, I'm just hitting on one thing, because to understand African-American culture, we need to understand its foundational roots, because the root of everything is like its source. And Africa is the root of African-American or new African culture. So it's its source. It's what you draw from. And then in a new environment, African-American culture begins to undergo stress and strain African people coming into this hemisphere. And as a result, we see new forms, transformation. Cultures change, but on essentials, they remain the same. And so this fundamental humane drive is central. This fundamental sense of connection to the all is central in African American or new African culture. 